class. My name is Don LaFont, Professor Don, and this week in our 8 plus hardware class, we are covering chapter 10 mobile devices. Hopefully the information is helpful. If you are here with me live, hold your questions until the end of the presentation. I'll give you an opportunity to ask those questions. If you are watching this as a recording inside of my Canvas class, please ask in the help discussion forums. And if you're watching this on YouTube, Welcome, I'm glad you found my video. Hopefully it will help you to learn the material you need to learn to pass your A-plus certification. If you have any questions, please ask questions down below in the comment section. And also please remember to like the video uh, if you find it helpful. All right, I got one more thing to do. I've got to start this presentation from the beginning and minimize this window. And we are ready to go. So presentation is about an hour and 15 minutes long and uh, covers a wide range of hardware, everything from cell phones to full-size laptops. So let's get starting. Uh, we talk about, uh, first we talk about soft skills with the parents and attire. Then we talk about mobile devices overview, and then we'll narrow it down to specifically laptops. So one of the soft skills that uh, you must uh, be aware of is how to dress appropriately, uh, parents and attire. Basically, uh, when it comes to a technician, you're not wearing a suit and a tie. You know that already. It's one of the benefits about being a technician. But what you should do is dress to the level of the client. Whatever the client is wearing, you should be wearing. So it does do help a little bit to do a little research into your client. You don't want to be overdressed. You don't want to be underdressed. Be aware of generational bias. That means uh, older people uh, expect you perhaps to be dressed more professionally than a younger generation. Avoid tattered je jeans, uh, trainers. Uh, they mean sports equipment, uh, sports out, uh, clothing, and t-shirts. If your job in involves dirty work, for example, pulling optic fiber cables through the overhead, jeans and a button down shirt, polo shirt are acceptable. Grooming, watch your haircuts and for men, watch your beards. Make sure they're relatively clean cut and keep your hands and nail clean. Cosmetics, women are more likely to be better liked and trusted if using moderate makeup and little or no perfume and little or no jewelry. Now, I know I'm going to get a little bit of fight back on this whole slide because the younger generation believes in lots of jewelry, lots of makeup, uh, wedding rings. But I'll tell you, when you're in the equipment, you really shouldn't be wearing a lot of jewelry. That jewelry could be dislodged and dropped into the equipment, and then it's a pain to get out, or it could actually do damage to the work. When I was in the Navy, I actually uh, was uh, filmed as a training video for the for my field. It was going to be shared uh, with uh, all of my rate uh, that worked on the equipment I worked on, and uh, we spent all day filming, only to have uh, the boss come to me the next day and say, "Why did you have your ring on? We need to do your wedding ring on. We need to do the entire thing over again." I said, oh, "I always wear my wed wedding ring," and he said, "Proper." procedures, no jewelry at all. And so they had to, the film crew had to come back out. They had to set all everything back up again. We had to do all of the recordings again. Complete waste of an entire day because I just forgot to take off my watch. I'm sorry, take off my ring, my wedding ring. Uh, you might wanna wa remove your watch as well. I guess if your watch is plastic, it's not as much of a deal, uh, but anything metal, anything that is conductive, you wanna be, cautious of, you don't want to be electrocuted, right? And you don't want uh, the shorts to damage the equipment, uh, any electrical shorts to damage the equipment. Mobile device overview. Mobile devices have become an integral part of society. Mobile devices are designed to be quick, light, and durable, and portable as well. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if some of you watching this video only have a mobile device. You don't have a full-size computer uh, with a 30 inch monitor, if uh, you're using, if you're not a gamer, the, the big computer uh, with a full size monitor uh, ha has, I won't say it's become a thing of the past, but it is absolutely 
uh, not necessary. If you've got a good laptop that you can carry around with you or smaller, my son, he told me the other day when I was talking to him about his computer, uh, he said, I don't have a computer. I use my phone. If I need a computer, I use my my fiance's computer. Uh, and uh, he doesn't. He doesn't use a computer. He uses a phone for everything. And some of you may be the same way. Uh, but uh, they are uh, mobile devices are becoming uh, much more uh, um, much more popular and exclusive to some people. Let's talk about some specific types of mobile devices. First one we'll talk about is tablets. Tablets are mobile device that has a touchscreen, camera, microphone, and possibly one or more ports, such as a USB, mini display port, or a mini Thunderbolt. I have a, not that I'm pushing it, but I have a, wind, uh, a Windows so uh, Surface uh, tablet that I love, and it actually has a mini HDMI port on it. So I can, I can uh, output when I'm in traveling, I can output from my, my, uh, my laptop there, and I can import it into, uh, plug it into the computer, I'm sorry, the monitor that I'm using, I have a mini on one side, full size HDMI on the other, and I can play anything from my tablet onto a TV screen uh, in a hotel room. So uh, your tablets are small, they're portable, they may have a keyboard. If they don't have a physical keyboard that it, uh, connects to the tablet, then it has a digital keyboard on top uh, that pops open uh, when you need it and hides when you don't. Uh, GPS. Uh, the uh, car you may drive may have a GPS. So you may have use your phone. Uh, GPS is a global positioning system. Uh, it's basically a series of satellites that orbit the Earth uh, that provide lo location, movement, and time information to other devices. This began as a military uh, uh, expense, and it was so so popular that the government released it uh, to the civilian population. And it's very accurate. When I miss a turn uh, within, I don't know, 50 feet, it knows that I've, I've, I'm in a different lane and I'm not making the turn they told me to make. So GPS mobile, uh, you know, back in the day, we used to have devices that sat on uh, the dashboard. Uh, you may still have one of those. That also is a GPS, uh, but I'll tell you, it was a little dangerous. Every now and then I made a turn and that thing slid across the, the dashboard. So I'm glad uh, that my GPS is built into my car at this point. Uh, smartphones, obviously, most, I'd say college students, 95 or higher percent, have a smartphone. It has the capability to make a call, run apps, play music, track movements, uses a GPS, connects to a wireless network, connects to wirelessly to other devices, connects to the internet through the phone network and wireless network and takes high resolution pictures and video. Uh, if you, I'm sure you realize this, but your smartphone is a full blown computer. It has all of the same elements that a computer desktop computer has. It has RAM, it has CPU, it has uh, a hard, a tiny hard drive in there, storage, um, flash media for storage. It, uh, a screen, obviously, you touch it, that's your input device. You look at it, that's your output device. A phone is a computer, and you know that. Um, and we use it like a computer. And uh, it, it basically, and today, everything is converged onto the smartphone. And the smartphone is what we use uh, for uh, everything from uh, authentication uh, to monitoring your health. Uh, and we wash your steps, for example, uh, to uh, the the picture and your personal information manager, right? So you have all your contacts in your phone. Somebody calls you, it tells you who's calling, et cetera. I, I could spend hours talking about things you already know because you have one of these things in your pocket. But just know it's a full-blown computer. So I don't want to hear, I had a student a few semesters ago that came up to me uh, after I introduced my presentation for CGS 1100 telling her what we we're going to learn. Uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access. I teach that class, and uh, they, they, uh, the student came up to me and said, "I don't have a computer. I've never used one in my life." And I said, "What do you mean? You're, you're, 
18 years old, 19 years old. How have you never used a computer? And she started talking. And what she meant was she had never had a desktop computer. She had never used a full-blown computer with a mouse. She had, she pulled out her, her cell phone. She had a computer with her. She, so she knows how to get to the internet. She knows how to register for classes. She knows, heck, probably how to write a paper for English class. She just uses text-to-speech. I'm sorry, speech to text to write the paper on, on Microsoft Word installed on her computer. I mean, on her smartphone. So she had a computer. Uh, just think of smartphones as a computer. And uh, that's the smart part of phone. A mobile device overview of phablet is a cross between a smartphone and a tablet. I just saw the Galaxy Fold that is the size of my Galaxy, which is a good size phone, and it opens to twice the size. And you can either use the, I'm not selling, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not selling Galaxy. It just happens to be what I have. Uh, but uh, you can either use uh, 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 the front of the phone and read it, or you can open it and use the inside. That is going to be my next phone because it was fantastic. And as my eyesight, as I get a little older, my eyesight gets a little worse. Uh, for reading, uh, I uh, love the idea of having twice the uh, desktop uh, on my uh, on my phone, the landscape, twice the amount of space to put things on. Uh, mobile devices, uh, you may have an e-reader. Uh, there's several different varieties uh, that are out there. Uh, an e-book, um, that's the that's what you download onto the e-reader. Uh, I'm not a big fan of them calling it an e-book, but who knows, maybe somebody has patented that name. Uh, but as an LCD screen, it's for reading and storing digital books, magazines, and other online material. Uh, one is color. Uh, color isn't very good for being out in the sun. Uh, the other one uses digital ink. It's black text on a white background, and it's fantastic. It looks um, just like you see in front of you, even if you're in the sun. Uh, that that's the black and white one. Uh, I would always have thought I would buy a color one until I s tried to use my laptop in the sun. And to, next to me, I saw somebody reading a book uh, using digital ink, and it looks just like it did there. And and I was I was sold. I would never buy a a uh, an e-reader uh, that's color. I would always re I would always buy the one with the uh, the 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 digital ink. Smart camera, uh, obviously you can still buy cameras as mobile devices, digital cameras, uh, but as we use smartphones as our cameras, uh, actual separate uh, devices uh, have been uh, decreasing in usage. Um, again, I don't want to uh, name any specific variety, but my son uh, went on a trip uh, climbing glaciers and he, uh, for uh, his birthday, he asked me for a camera that he can attach to his helmet, and uh, that camera can also be attached to a drone. And uh, it's it's not it's it's not the old fashioned square camera uh, that we're used to carrying around back in the day. Uh, it, it it I think it was round, and it um and it was controlled remotely from his phone. Uh, and uh, so he was able to take pictures of it, probably from the drone software as well. Um, anyways, he just bought a drone too. He's got all the toys. Uh, the uh, let's see. So uh, the smart camera can have one or more extra capabilities other than a, just a standard digital camera like your phone. It might uh, be able to tell facial recognition, measuring, inspection for quality assurance, surveillance, surveillance, surveillance. Ah and uh, robot guidance. Uh, you might even be able to fly that drone with it. Uh, I had a um, uh, an inspector uh, that uh, showed me a device that was the size of a cell phone, and uh, he used it to measure uh, without uh, breaking into the wall. He was able to measure the amount of moisture that was in the wall. I thought that was really interesting. So infrared, um, heat sensitive, Mobile watches, I just got my first watch. I won't tell you which variety it is, but I'm loving it. Not loving the battery on it. It doesn't seem to um, last me a whole day. It's still going strong uh, when I'm making this video, but we still got several several more hours. 
uh, like a tiny computer strapped to your wrist. Uh, think Star Trek, if you will. <laughs> Anyways, uh, sorry, that's something that some of you don't even know, who knows. Uh, fitness monitor detects movement, step counting, calculates distance, has some GPS features, counts calories, uh, if you import them, uh, measures heart rate and pulse and measures sleep. Mine does all of those. Uh, I, I need it to uh, also take my blood pressure too, but it doesn't have that capability yet, but they're always adding it. So who knows what will come down the road. Uh, you might have uh, that smartwatch. Uh, oh no, that now they're talking about um, a uh, glasses, a wearable technology that has a tiny computer display visible to one eye allowing taking photos, videos, making calls, commonly has a processor, RAM, and storage. Um, I, I'm a little nervous about a camera that is recording video uh, that's built into your glasses, but I love the concept of sound. My AI, I don't have a set of glasses that my AI can control, but I like the idea of just being able to, no matter where I am, just say, my AI and ask a question and have the tiny speakers that are over my ears uh, talk to me. I like, I love that idea, uh, but I don't wear glasses every day. I only wear them to read. So it's wouldn't it be as useful for me as it would be some, somebody that, that has to wear them for driving, et cetera. Smart shoes allows the control of wedge, wedgeless devices, such as smartphones and appliances uh, using foot movements. And uh, earrings, a wearable technology that tracks heart rate and calories burned uh, from an, a smart earring. Who knows uh, what you might have for your smart devices? If you're if you're watching this on on uh, YouTube, please down below in your comments. Go ahead, tell me what exactly you're using. Uh, uh, show off your device. Take a picture. Post it. Tell you. Tell us why you like it or why you don't. Uh, put those comments down below. I love reading those things, so that would be awesome. Mobile accessories include headsets. Um, I have a VR headset that I, I used to play games with all the time. I don't think I picked it up in a year, but once I when I was hooked on it, I used that headset every night for about two or three hours for about six months, and it was a lot of fun playing those games. Uh, they're smart devices. Uh, they can uh, they can read your movement. They can uh, position in the room. Uh, they may be able to monitor other things as well. Uh, speakers, uh, uh, earbuds, if you will, uh, any kind of uh, headphone that's Bluetooth, uh, game pads, obviously, uh, if you've ever had a, a Xbox or PlayStation, you play games remotely, there's generally no, never a wire connected to a game pad. Uh, mobile docking station allowing you to take a laptop or other device and connect it uh, to a docking system. I had this uh, at my uh, previous job and I went into work. I plugged in my laptop. It connected to three monitors, my mouse and my keyboard. It felt like I had a full blown computer when I was ready to go in the evening. I disconnected the laptop from the dock. And I was able to walk out and I had a mobile laptop that I was able to carry with me. Uh, so the docking station has to match the equipment that you currently have. So you can't just buy any docking station. Although they do have uh, devices that, uh, smart devices, hubs, if you will, that have multiple connections to the hub. So it might have an HDMI port in, 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 along with USB ports and uh, for your keyboard and mouse. So. Uh, it, if you have the type of hub that the keyboard locks into, I mean, the laptop locks into, then you have what I had, uh, but it could also be just a hub that you connect to one USB slot and now you have multiple USB slots, HDMI and other devices as well. You might have an extra battery pack that you plug your phone in when it's running low or battery charger, protective cover, uh, that. Uh, keyboard on my Microsoft Surface, which I love so much. Uh, the keyboard actually protects the screen. It closes and it makes it more like a, a uh, laptop, but it's not a laptop because I can disconnect the two. Uh, you may have waterproofing. I'm happy phones and watches are waterproof today. Back in the day, uh, if you drop that phone into a glass of water accidentally, uh, you 
you bought a new phone because it was never water it wasn't waterproof when they first came out and and often you get to have you know obviously you're not going to drop it in a glass of water often but you might put it in your pants you might get caught in a rainstorm that water going through your pants pocket could damage your phone back in the day a credit card reader a magnetic card reader uh, if you're in a business you might have a square or some other device that connects to your phone and is able to read uh, the credit cards from customers, potential customers. So definitely um, something that you may have even as a consumer. Uh, when you're using mobile devices, they will have different operating systems. Uh, they may have Windows on it, like my Windows Surface. You may have Chrome OS, which you see in front of you here. Uh, might have an iPad, uh, which uses um, uh, Mac software on that device. And uh, you'll be used to whatever software you are currently using. But as a technician, uh, if you're troubleshooting devices, you're going to have to be familiar with whatever software is on the tablets that you use. And I specifically say uh, that because you have, uh, let's say you work at a big box store and they use uh, tablets for inventory management. Well, you're going to have several of those tablets and you're going to have uh, or phablets, and the and the and the and the um, salespeople or the uh, people that work the floor uh, taking inventory uh, will have those devices as they move about the store, and you might be responsible for fixing those. So you will have to be familiar with how to use the software, regardless of which operating system it is. Cell phones. Uh, the e I, the I M E I is the International Mobile Equipment Identity. Uh, I M E I that's what it, it, that stands for uh, is a unique number given to a particular cell phone and some satellite phones. The I M S I is the International Mobile Subscriber Identity. It's a u unique number that is stored in your smartphone subscriber information module. Now we use those. Uh, much like we use a MAC address on a PC, uh, the MAC address on any kind of NIC, uh, uniquely identifying that device. But since um, MAC addresses on a PC, on a, on a NIC, are only regionally unique, you can't really use MAC addresses on a cell phone that you could be traveling the world with. Uh, they're only regional MAC addresses are regionally unique um, uh, if we're talking about IPv4. IPv6 is, is global. Uh, but the IMEI and IMSI are both gl uniquely global, global, unique, unique globally. Anyways, uh, so you can be anywhere in the wor world and still get your phone call when somebody calls you without having to worry about it going to somebody else's phone. The SIM card. The subscriber identification module uh, is used in mobile phones, satellite phones, mobile devices, and laptops to uniquely identify you on that device. I was just read that SIM card. I was just list, uh, learning about today. That SIM card can now be an eSIM, which means it's a digital card, which may, makes it much easier uh, to transfer your SIM card, your information, from one phone to another phone. Uh, this, the old SIM card has a little uh, SIM uh, uh, um, device that slides in of your, into your phone and it comes out, uh, and then you take that SIM and you can put it on another phone. The eSIM, you can just turn it off and turn it on on a different phone. Um, I'm uh, excited. So this, th those SIM cards, those, those of you that are out there that have SIM cards and you know what I'm talking about, moving them from one phone to another, soon that will be a thing of the past, and I'll be happy to see those go. Uh, PRI and PRL updates. Each phone contains a specific product release instruction PRI configuration file. This file contains what frequency bands can be used and the default preference roaming list PRL, preference roaming list to use. Again, it, it controls where you can use your phone and on what frequency. Mobile apps. Applications commonly called apps for mobile devices come with the device, can be downloaded free of charge, or can be purchased through the App Store on Apple iOS, through Google Play on Android services, and in the Windows Store on Windows devices. 
So uh, applications are just like they are on a Windows computer, except they're, they work for phones. Uh, obviously the device uh, determines what is, is uh, capable to work, what is, um, what's the word, uh, compatible. Uh, so my phone, my new watch, for example, uh, I, uh, I was disappointed that there weren't hundreds of apps for me to load on my phone. And then I realized uh, after a couple of days that every app that I put on my phone uses battery and the, and the battery on my phone is obviously is much smaller than the battery on my Samsung uh, smartphone. Uh, so uh, the, uh, you don't want a lot of things running on your smartphone. I mean, on your watch, um, my wife just says, doesn't it just tell time? Well, it does more than that, but you don't want it to do too much because the battery is limited on smartwatches just because of the, the space to put a battery on it. Mobile apps, the common mobile apps, uh, Android, we have Gmail, Google Maps, Gallery Photos, uh, my library for any eBooks you've downloaded. Uh, you have Chrome for a browser or any other browser. Uh, I hate to just have Chrome there, but you can use Firefox uh, on a um, Android app or any other browser that you are familiar with. Uh, Play Music, Clock, Play Store, those are just some of the apps on your mobile devices. Uh, iOSs include Mail, Maps, Photos, iBooks, Safari is the browser, iTunes for Music, Calendar, and App Store. Windows app, hey, it's gonna sound familiar. Uh, mail, maps, photos, uh, reader, edge for surfing the web, music, calendar, Windows Store. Uh, so uh, these are just some common apps and obvious all of the devices you can read email on, you can send and receive text messages, you can take pictures on. I can't take pictures with my phone, but I can use my phone to control my, my smartphone to take a picture. Uh, so that's something. Anyways, lots of uh, lots of apps uh, that you can uh, install on uh, smartphones, on tablets, on laptops. Uh, lots of uh, the capabilities of a full blown computer on a mobile device. When you're connecting your laptop, uh, first of all, we have uh, digital connections, and that's probably what you're listening to music with on your phone. You're pro if you're not playing it on the phone itself, obviously but you probably have a Bluetooth connection. That Bluetooth connection can connect to Bluetooth headphones, uh, Bluetooth sound bars, uh, Bluetooth speakers. Uh, Bluetooth is a way of connecting to a lot of, uh, a lot of different devices. Um, mobile device, freq uh, mobile, okay, mo mobile devices, uh, mobile devices have many of the same ports that computers do, but, in smaller versions. So as I mentioned earlier, my uh, Surface has a, uh, a mini uh, HDMI, I'm pretty sure it's mini HDMI, uh, and uh, there you may have mini USB, micro USB connections. Uh, today, uh, in uh, summer of 2022, type C USBs are coming out on all of the new devices, so much better than the standard type A USB, whether it's a uh, 2.0, 3.0, but uh, type C is the newest kind of connection and um, I'm loving it. I'm loving how small it is, how you can uh, to put a device in it either direction, doesn't matter. And it's fast. And uh, the, there's even a micro mini a B port that accepts either a mini or a micro a or a mini or micro B cable end. So. There is even some uh, ports that are that are you can have multiple different types of connections made on it, and then of course USB-C is now the standard interface for smartphones. Apple connectors include Apple uh, 30 pin dock connectors, Apple Lightning connectors, uh, micro USB, mini USB, traditional USB. It gives you a big picture of the, the lightning control and the Apple, the Apple lightning port. You Apple people out in the world, you have wanted it, you're getting it. Uh, the new standard uh, for Apple devices moving forward is USB-C. So 
the lightning connector and all those charging uh, cords that you have with lightning connectors, they're all going away. Uh, everything's going to be USB-C in the near future for future devices. Bluetooth, uh, I mentioned it earlier, a radio-based wireless technology used to connect two or more devices together that are commonly within close range of one another. This device of connectivity is called a wireless personal area network PAN. We covered that earlier in the semester. Bluetooth, Bluetooth has three classes. Class one range of 328, about 100 meters. Class two is 10 meters, 33 feet. And class three, the older uh, range of three feet, one meter. Uh, today, uh, most devices uh, that you would have would be class two at this point in the summer of 2022. Uh, they would be class two. Uh, your smartphones, for example, are smart two, uh, are class two with a range of about 30 feet, and then you start losing the connection. Uh, wireless connectivity, IEEE, IEEE 802.11 wireless, used to connect mobile devices to wireless networks and operate in the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz range. You can have airplane range, airplane, airplane, ah, airplane mode to turn you, turn off the, the, um, the, the wireless connections, but still use your device for movies, for example, uh, playing games, but not uh, connected. Uh, obviously, it has the word airplane mode in it because they don't want you, when you get on a plane to fly someplace, they tell you to turn off your devices because they say it may mess with the sensors on the plane and everybody wants that to work. I just heard recently that uh, the, uh, the um, the satellite network that uh, SpaceX has uh, is has been approved for airplane uh, connectivity. So we may be seeing more uh, connectivity in airplanes uh, through satellite connections. Hotspot, a wireless network that has free internet access. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Let's say you have a tablet and uh, tablet does not have built in um, uh, internet connection you need to use either a wireless connection or when you're on the road you can use your cell phone to create a hotspot that you can connect to your tablet or have your tablet connect to your phone to connect to the internet that's called tethering that's when you share an internet connection with other mobile devices in a nearby area in that pan that personal area network infrared ir a radio-based wireless technology that operates in the 300 gigahertz to 430 terahertz range, but met many devices use either 2.4 gig or 27 megahertz. Uh, infrared, you're familiar with them. Uh, they, uh, you're, you've been using a wireless, you've been using a, a remote control forever. Uh, that's uh, in this range uh, for infrared. A radio frequency identifier, RFID uses a wireless radio wave to locate something. So earlier, I, I felt like I was um, actually giving you bad information because I was talking about a big box store running around with the tablet taking, uh, taking um, uh, inventory of what's on the shelf. We really don't do that anymore. Uh, today, most devices, many devices have ARFIDs in the equipment, I'm sorry, in the product that's being sold. And the ARFID itself tells the computer, hey, I'm on the shelf. That way you don't have to spend money on a person going over to check to see if it's on the shelf. When the RFID is, when you check out, the RFID is deactivated so it doesn't set off an alarm when you're leaving the store. Uh, it's something that is, has been, uh, they've been building for years and uh, you find it now in more places than you don't uh, using RFID for inventory. Basically, you've seen them. Uh, little uh, things have to be demagnetized on the way out. Near field communications, NFC, radio-based wireless technology similar to RFID, but it only has a range of 10 inches. Cellular, cellular networks, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, NFCs, uh, we use it for uh, um, checkouts, right? When you're going through the checkout now, I can use my, my watch, I just put my watch up to the uh, the um, credit card reader, 
and it reads my watch and uh, the credit card I have stored in my watch pays the bill. Same thing could be with your cell phone. Uh, and actually, uh, credit cards themselves now have a little transmitter uh, that can be easily read. That's NFC. Uh, it, it's not transmitting. It's just being read when you tap uh, the um, your card onto the device. Similar. Cellular networks, a collection of devices that allow mobile phones and smartphones to communicate. You, you see the towers in the side of the highway. That's what allows you to use your phone. Cellular data, cellular data, two methods for sending data over a cellular network, short message service, SMS, and multimedia message service, MMS. SMS is for use for text messages, and MMS is used for digital data such as phones and video. Every now and then when I try to send a video via text, it says converting to MMS because it has to be sent via MMS because it's too big for SSS. It's a size limitation. VPN, you can even run a VPN on your mobile devices to ensure privacy. Uh, it's used to create a private network between you and any other device, uh, and it hides your ISP, or actually it doesn't hide it, it just changes out your ISP uh, to a different uh, ISP. So if anybody sees it, it, does, it can't track you necessarily. Uh, laptop overviews, so laptop hardware, a laptop has similar parts and ports as a desktop computer, but some of these components are smaller. I'm going to say most of these co components are smaller. Whether taking anything out of, whenever taking anything out of a laptop, one of the major issues is tiny screws. Use a magnetic screwdriver to remove the screws and place them on a magnetized tray if possible, or in a dish. Do not just place them on the counter because I promise you, you won't be finding them when they get knocked onto the floor. A laptop repairs overview. Uh, use proper anti-static procedures, organize your parts, take photos as you're taking things apart. It's one of my favorite tricks uh, of taking photos before I start taking things apart. And then I take pictures as I go to help myself remember how it went, uh, how it goes back together again. Take notes, use appropriate tools, uh, no butter knives, guys. Uh, always refer to the manufacturer's directions when removing and installing parts. I've got a video here to show you or share with you for disassembling a laptop. Let's watch it. There hasn't been any sound yet. Here, here it comes. GD70, 17 inch laptop. We're going to open up and explore the inside. As you know, to start off, we always have something soft to put your laptop on so you don't scratch it when you move it around. Now we're going to shift to the back. And first, we're going to remove the battery which everyone should know how to remove it. So you can pull apart the two sides. Put your finger in the hole, lift it up, and it comes out. Now, we're going to remove the back plate. There's three screws holding the back cover down. If you look at the holes, there's actually more than three. There should be five. The other two are the keyboard holes, screws which you don't need to remove just to remove the back cover. If you want, you can just remove it just in case if you don't understand it. So there's a little tab hole there. So there's a little gap here. As an arrow, you put your finger in and you lift it up and you remove the back cover like that. So that's the hard drive. That's the RAM. M.2 side that's the wireless card. CPU, that's a graphic card, that's a fan to pull it. Now we're going to remove the DV drive. There's one screw holding the DV drive down. Just pull out the DV drive after the screw is removed. Comes the screw easily. Now 
Now we're going to remove the hard drive. It's two screws holding the hard drive down. There's a plastic tab for you to pull the hard drive. It's normally tucked under, so you have to pull it out and tilt it up slightly to remove the hard drive. So we're going to remove the ends up to, oh, sorry, inside of the hard drive. Just remove one screw and a tilt up like the RAM. I'm just going to put it back as um, you don't need to remove it. And now, the RAM, just pull the two sides apart and the RAM pops up. Now there's, this is the keyboard screw. This tool, if you look at the back cover, it has a keyboard side next to the screw hole. You need to remove these two screws if you want to remove the keyboard. <coughs> Now we're going to keep the laptop open. On top of the keyboard, there's a sticker. There's a steel series sticker. Looking at? You're going to have to remove it. Try not to dirty it. As, um, it's just sticky tape. It's basically sticky tape. If it's dirty, you're going to have to put it back and roll it properly. Now we remove it. There's five screws underneath. You need to remove these five screws to remove the keyboard. Now that we remove the pipe screws, the keyboard just tilts up, you just pull it up and it comes up. Don't lift it up too hard. As um there are cables underneath, there are two. There should be one with black light cable and one keyboard cable. Yeah, you can see it. But hardly there's a cable on the other side of the computer. We're gonna to have to flip it back over to remove it. There's two brown things in the corner. You just push it away from you and it releases the cable. What about the big one? Let me do the big one now. Oh, you can see it? Yep. Same here. To push the black tab forward and it releases the cable. And that's it. This is relatively pretty easy. There's not much screws holding the whole thing down. Two keyboard screws, three back, back plate, back cover screws, and that's basically it. The rest is two hard drive screws or whatever you wish to remove. That's basically it. Thanks for watching. All right, so uh, that, that wasn't too painful. And uh, what I would highly recommend uh, when it comes to removing uh, or repairing a laptop, especially, 
is go ahead and go to YouTube and find a video of somebody that has taken apart your specific version of the laptop. I was riveted. I, I watched somebody take apart uh, my smartphone uh, a few models back, and I never complained anymore about paying $100 for a new screen when I broke the glass because the, the process of replacing a glass is not as simple as glass pops off, glass goes back in. Basically, they had to take apart the entire phone to get at the, the glass screen. Uh, so, but by watching the video, you'll get uh, a, you'll become familiar with the steps for your specific model. Whatever that model is, there's probably somebody out there that has made a video. If not, you make a video uh, and post it uh, and, uh, and help, help your fellow technicians out. Laptop memory. Laptops use a special form factor called a small outline DIM, S-O-D-I-M. Uh, and that uh, memory module is just small. I got a picture of it. No, I don't have a picture of it on the next slide. It's just smaller than uh, the uh, RAM that we put into a desktop computer. Another type is a micro DIM. Uh, the SO DIMs are the most popular and include 72 pin versions for 32 bit transfer, and then 144, 200, 204, or 260 pin versions for 64 bit transfer. I hate to tell you this, but those numbers are important when you're studying for the A plus certification. You need to know how many pins are on a uh, on laptop memory and on regular desktop memory as well. We covered that a few modules ago. A Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi and a blue uh, and Bluetooth card. Uh, frequently, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card are one and the same unit, easily replaced. Laptop wireless NIC replacement. Don't forget to disconnect and reattach the cables that go to the wireless antenna. Laptop storage. Uh, laptop hard drives come in two major form factors, 1.4 inch uh, found in laptops, ultrabooks, and ultra portable devices such as MP3 players, they're all tiny ones, and then two and a half inch designed for laptops. Two and a half inch is uh, a standard even for full size computers, possibly. <laughs> At least uh, SSDs, 2.5 inch SSDs have been standard for a long time. Laptop display. Uh, I liked the fact that they showed removing the keyboard, but you notice he did not remove the, the uh, the display, which can be a little bit more challenging. <clears throat> In a six minute video, uh, he didn't have time to remove that that display. Uh, mobile devices, uh, some mobile devices serving as laptops have removable screens. Uh, for example, my Surface, uh, some laptops have rotating screens. So obviously you are going to have to uh, Again, the type of monitor, the type of laptop, the type of device determines how to go about removing that laptop if you have to. Disconnecting a touch, touch screen. The hardest part of removing a touch screen display is disconnecting all of the cables that are attached to it. And they show you here there are multiple cables uh, that are attached to wireless LAN, Bluetooth, cellular cards, video cables, all of them attaching to. Uh, that touch screen. Mobile device security. Laptops have special physical security needs, uh, optional security measures. Use a nondescript bag to carry the laptop. A little hard to do. Uh, everybody wants to uh, show off their hardware, but if you're traveling, especially, you don't want it to be obvious that you have the newest model just because it'll be the target uh, for theft. Have an engraved permanent asset tag attached to it in a school environment or work environment so that uh, if it is stolen, it's easily identified when, when it is um, recovered. Install a physical laptop lock or laptop locking station. Um, I have seen this on a regular basis. I, when I first started working at the college I currently work for, 
uh, there was a laptop that was sitting on a desk right next to the exit door of the library in a small office. There was nobody there, uh, just a laptop sitting on the counter. And I went and I mentioned it to my boss. I said, uh, hey, you need, we need to have a way to lock down these laptops. Otherwise, somebody's going to walk away from with one. And he said, oh, tell the IT. And I told IT and IT said, no, there's nothing we can do about it because you have to be able to move that laptop around. Well, not even a week later, that laptop was gone. <laughs> not even a week later. Uh, so there are, so they implemented a locking mechanism. Basically a cable is a screw where it screws into the laptop. Uh, uh, and uh, once it's screwed in, it locks. Uh, I forget how it, disengages, but it's locked. And then the other side screwed around a portion of the desk. Uh, so somebody stealing the laptop would have to steal the desk. It was just too close to an exit door. And and uh, I noticed it, I said something about it, but some people have to learn the hard way, I guess, hard way. Uh, use the universal security slot that allows a cable lock. That's what I'm talking about, the USS. Uh, software packages exist that automatically contact a tracking center in case of theft, uh, sort of like uh, your uh, your um, my my car can notify the uh, the manufacturer of the car and tell them where my car is at any time. So uh, it's a Tesla. It's a little high tech, but a lot of cars have that capability right now. Basically. The the company knows the company can actually turn off my car. So if somebody steals my car, figures figures out a way to steal my car, I can call Tesla and Tesla can turn off my car, and uh, and then tell me tell the police where to go to pick up my car. So it's interesting. Uh, but there's um, there's other there's other software packages that can be installed on your tablet and just sit in the background not scream, hey, I'm on here, right? So sit in the background until the, the authorities, uh, as soon as they sign into the internet, or maybe that software automatically signs into the internet based on movement or based on location or based on some sort of other activity, maybe 10 password attempts that are incorrect and it automatically notifies uh, the person that put the software in indicating where it is. And that is it for this chapter. So a uh, very interesting chapter because there's so much we could talk about uh, when we talk about mobile devices. This is really just a high level, get you into your uh, A plus certification content. Uh, but obviously if you focus on any of these devices, you can make an entire career. Uh, people at, at the phone, the cell companies do, they just, just repairing, replacing, configuring phones and they made that's how they make their living right just think about when you bought your phone if you didn't buy it online uh, but anyway so that's my presentation for today uh, the presentation comes from the complete a plus guide to hardware and software cheryl a smith's book it is uh, comptia a plus 220 1001 and 220 1002 exam cycle and that it, remember that cycle is going to uh, move to the next cycle in the beginning of 2023. So if you're studying now, I highly enc encourage you to go ahead and take the exam after you get done going through these, the, the textbook, the assignments, the, my, my videos, uh, test prep, whatever you got to do uh, to go ahead and then take the, uh, the certification before you forget this stuff. So, uh, and then let me know, put a note in the classroom. I'd love to hear uh, from you saying uh, that you uh, passed the exam. That's awesome when I hear from my students, even the ones from out on the internet uh, that use my videos to help prepare for the A plus certifications. I also uh, would welcome recommendations. So if you took the exam and something uh, could be added to this presentation to uh, make it better for future students, uh, I record these videos over every semester. Uh, to make sure that I'm always current on the content. So I'd be, I'd love to hear from you. So leave a note in the comments down below. All right. Uh, if you're here with me live, don't go anywhere. We're going to have a moment for questions. Uh, if you watch this video as a recording inside of my Canvas classroom, please ask questions in the help discussion forums and students promise to help each other. 
And if you're watching it on YouTube, thank you for watching the whole video. I really appreciate it. Hopefully it's helpful for you. Uh, please like and subscribe so you uh, can find me easily for future videos and hit that notification bell. I am releasing these videos in the summer of 2022. And then I'll, I, I also teach Cisco. I'm following up these videos with Cisco 3 videos. Of course, you still have to do Cisco 1 and 2. Those are all posted inside of my channel. So hopefully you find those helpful. Again, my name's Don, Don LaFond, Professor Don. It's been my pleasure to help you today. And I look forward to uh, seeing you again in the next chapter. Thank you for coming to class.